So in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders made it abundantly clear that they wanted to add some playmaking ability to the secondary. With their first round pick, number 16 overall, they select cornerback Emmanuel Forbes. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with the backstory of the first round pick, Emmanuel Forbes. We're going to tell you a little bit about his personal life and his collegiate and professional life. And what you should expect from this player. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL, or in this case, I'll watch the comments. Let me know who you guys want to see me do a who is he on next. With that out the way, let's get straight into today's video. January 13th, 2001 was the day May Forbes was given life, as he is a part of a huge family, as it is 10 of them in total he is the second youngest could you imagine having nine other siblings how competitive these games growing up must have been from kickball to baseball to backyard football to the last person to get the donut to being the first person in the shower all he knew was competitiveness growing up competing was a trait that Emmanuel Forbes had to learn early and it's something that he stuck with his whole entire life up until this point Forbes was very athletic growing up and he was a multi-talent athlete. It was even a point where he thought baseball was his actual career. He tops out at 95 miles per hour on the mound. A Nationals, if you need some help, which we do, hit Emmanuel Forbes up. Um, he is a guy that played multiple positions on the gridiron also. Dating back to his time at high school at Grenada in Mississippi, he was a receiver, defensive back, and a returner. And for the entire four seasons he was there, he was a spark plug for the Chargers. The numbers Forbes put up on the defense should not be a surprise. He recorded 49 tackles as a receiver with 8 interceptions, 2 return for a touchdown, and 12 pass breakups. But Forbes was also a solid wideout using his sub 44 speed to rack up 499 yards and 7 touchdowns on 31 receptions. Forbes also believes that his time as a receiver has helped him become a better defender. He quoted this I had a knock for the ball honestly and it just translated over to the DB position if I feel like I can get my hands on him and try to go pick it so that's just helped me out a lot and once he corrals in a pick it's not over the guy has shown you some serious return speed and perhaps his first time being a full-time starter which happens to be a sophomore year he has two punt returns for a touchdown so maybe he can help out the commanders in that aspect too and as mentioned before this guy is an athlete to go along with his football and baseball career he also played basketball growing up and he also was a youth quarterback so this guy has done it all and has a ton of experience playing sports growing up as a four-star recruit Forbes was the 13th ranked quarterback in the 2020 recruiting class and is the second best overall prospect in Mississippi in December of 2019 he signed a national letter of interest to play college football for the Bulldogs at Mississippi State he he had also received several JUCO offers to play college baseball. So Forbes giving up the opportunity to play baseball to pursue his football career, started playing for the Bulldogs. Forbes was included in the SEC All-Freshman team after recording 45 tackles and 5 interceptions, 3 of which were returned for touchdowns. As a sophomore in 2021, he started in all 13 games, recording 59 tackles and 3 interceptions. He was a consensus of the 20. Forbes is fourth in Mississippi State history with 14 interceptions and holds the FBS record for most career interceptions returned for touchdowns with six. He also holds the school record for the longest interception return at 90 yards doing so at the 2020 Armed Forces Bowl. If you're ever wondering why Forbes plays so hard while watching him, it's because late Mississippi State head coach Mike Leach held him to a high regard. Leach worked with several talented players during his legendary career but Forbes had a special place in his mind. Back in this past November, Forbes was in the midst of another strong season. He ultimately finished with a career high in interceptions and he had a lot of pass breakups of 11 and he was up for multiple awards because of that play. One of them however was not the Jim Thorpe Award which is given to the best defensive back in college football. In fact despite breaking the record and getting the second most interceptions in the FBS, Forbes wasn't even 
a finalist that bothered Leach. I have great respect for the other finalists, but they did not rewrite the record books like Emmanuel Forbes did, said Leach. He is the ultimate competitor, one of the greatest players I've ever coached. Now, with all the praise that Emmanuel Forbes was receiving based off of his athletic career there at Mississippi State, rightfully so, a lot of people had concerns and was critiquing him based off of his size as whether or not he could play at the next level. Forbes weighed in at 166 pounds at the NFL Combine, and that could be a concern for a lot of people, but Ron Rivera was not one of those people. Rivera went on record saying this. He did it in the SEC, which is just a notch below the NFL. He played against some big-time receivers, big-time quarterbacks. The commanders are convinced that Forbes is not a victim of his size. It does not stop him from being physical and sticking his nose in the run game to shut down much bigger receivers. What's more impressive is that he was able to stay healthy throughout his whole entire college career and did not miss a game because of injury. When you watch his tape, you do not know that he's that light, Mayhew said. He doesn't look like that on tape. He doesn't play like that. He's been durable. So that's something that we don't really concern ourselves with. And Forbes is knowledgeable of this information, how certain teams are going to pass up on him and certain teams are concerned about him playing at the next level due to his weight. So Forbes took it upon himself to send a message out to teams during his pro day. They quoted this. If they are not going to pick me because of what I weigh, I think they're making a mistake. Now, I think this whole weight thing with a lot of NFL players, is just a myth because, I mean, you can gain weight. You can lose weight at any point in time of your life. So just how they thought Devonta Smith and a plethora of other smaller players were going to fail at the NFL level, they're actually succeeding. Again, Devonta Smith being one of the most successful ones. So to me, this whole weight thing isn't the biggest concern that I have for Emmanuel Forbes. I think he'll be just fine. You get him in a weight program, you get him out there and get him lifting and on a diet plan to gain some weight, he'll be just fine. And he's a guy that's physical. He's a guy that's not afraid that's going to get up in your chest. He's not afraid to go ahead and be a help in the run game. And that's all at 160. He's always around the action. So just imagine when he gets around the best trainers in the world, the guys that literally get paid to help players lose and gain weight all the time, he'll be just fine. So the weight wasn't the problem for me. The problem for me was, can he be disciplined? Can he actually stay put, be disciplined, be step for step, be strive for strive with these fast, bigger receivers in the NFL? Because he's a ball hawk, as we mentioned, but what also comes with being a ball hawk is probably not the best of coverage because you're always looking to make a play on the ball and you guys know me i love interceptions that's exciting but i would prefer to have a guy that's a shutdown corner that step for step for a wide receiver that's totally taking a wide receiver out the game and i'm not saying the man with forbes can't do that however i want to know is he going to know when to pick his spots when to be aggressive when to not be aggressive when to just play the receiver straight up that's the only concern that i really have but as far as the player i don't dislike Emmanuel Forbes. I personally would have just rather had Christian Gonzalez because I personally feel like he is more of the corner that I'm looking for. The 6'2", 200 pound shutdown guy. Now at 16 when the Commanders was picking, they had a ton of options as most of the cornerbacks were still on the board and according to a lot of these analysts out there, the best one Christian Gonzalez was still there at 16. So although a lot of fans thought that was the pick, they decided to stick with four. So why is the first question that came into early Commanders fans' mind? Why Emmanuel Forbes out of all the cornerbacks that were still available? Because the team believes he can change the way they play. Rivera said this, this is a guy that fits the bill for us and we think it's going to come in and help us and help elevate our defense. If there was an area where the Washington Commanders defense struggled, it was creating turnovers. They had just nine interceptions in 2022, which was ranked 28th last season. Fixing that was a point of emphasis for defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio. He wanted the team to find the ball hawk, and grabbing the active college football leader and interceptions should certainly help solve that problem. He's tall, he gets his 
hands on guys and press Mayhew said. He disrupts routes, so he's the total package. He really is. He could do everything that a corner should be able to do. So if you was wondering why the Washington Commanders took Emmanuel Forbes at 16, that is the reason. So there you have it. The background information and personal life and professional career of Emmanuel Forbes. This is who he is. And I'm glad I was able to help you figure that out. As always, it's me and boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe. Hail to the Washington Commanders. We want to roll to 6,000 subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, let me know which player you want to see me cover next. See you guys later. I'm out. Peace.